All right, so here's an example involving displacement. Um, first, the question asks us to graph this particular vector valued function. So we just have cosine and sine. Um, so we're looking at a circle, a unit circle, in fact, um, but perhaps not the entire circle, right? Uh, t is going to go from, from minus 1 to 1. Um, so let's see. When t is equal to minus 1, where are we? Um, we're at cosine of minus pi over 2. That's 0. We're at sine of minus pi over 2, which is minus 1. So we actually start, we start down here at minus 1, 0, right? And t is going to increase as we pass through 0. We're going to go through, uh, oh, sorry, this is, get my coordinates right. Huh. Oh, classic mistake there. Um, x is 0. Y is minus 1, coming up through 1, 0, and ending when t is equal to 1 at 0, 1. Okay. So there's our, there's our curve. Um, by the way, one thing that you might want to do um, is, is you can sometimes indicate, you know, hey, there's a direction of motion associated with this curve, right? Um, the nice thing about whether you're doing parametric curves or vector-valued functions, there, there's an orientation, there's a direction along the curve that's inherited from the sort of natural ordering of the real numbers, right? We're going that way. Okay, so with that in mind, we can, we can plot r at minus 1, all right, which is going to be 0 minus 1. We can plot... Um, R of 1, which is going to be 0, 1. And our displacement will be R of 1, subtract R of minus 1, which is going to be 0, 2, right? So from beginning to end, we go up two units, right? Two units in the y direction. And even though, yes, we did go out and come back, the x-coordinate from beginning to end hasn't changed.